Recognizing good products developed by other teams is always a pressure. Inserting them into our product line into Nectar is definitely for the customer's delight. Nectar's latest asset are compilers, XC compilers from Microchip. Welcome to our latest video where we dive into the world of Nectar's newest addition, XC compilers. This powerful toolset includes three unique compilers. First up is XC8, specifically designed for 8-bit PIC microcontrollers. With it, you will be able to quickly create straightforward apps. Next, we have XC16, tailored for 16-bit PIC microcontrollers. This advanced compiler offers optimized performance, providing you with mid-range devices without sacrificing ease of use. And finally, there is XC32, the ultimate choice for developing on 32-bit microcontrollers. Offering an unprecedented level of control over your projects, this robust compiler enables you to take advantage of the most sophisticated features available on today's leading edge hardware platforms. How to get started with XC compilers from within Nectar? First of all, launch Nectar if you haven't already, then go to Setups menu. This is the place where you configure hardware that will be used for the project. After clicking Next, you are being presented with a set of tool chains you are able to use. This video is all about XC compilers, so let's select one of them. I will go with XC32 version. Remember, there are two options available for each compiler. You can go with SDK support, which basically means you can utilize 1500 of those click ports just like that. Or you can go bare metal and creating your own libraries, drivers, or making use of off-the-shelf libraries. So, by clicking on Advanced, I will start light and I will perform bare metal demo in the first place, then subsequently micro SDK example. Ok, click Save, then click Next in the upper right corner. After selecting Preferred Toolchain, you are being presented with a set of development boards available for the selected toolchain. Fusion for PIC32 is the board I stole from the company's stockroom, so I will select this board as a preferred board. Ok, board is selected. Click Next in the upper right corner. Microcontroller selection. There are several microcontrollers available. Why? This board, Fusion for PIC32 version 8, comes with the Seabrain socket available. Ok, Seabrain socket, what is it? That's basically a socket, a template in which you are able to plug in a vast majority of microcontrollers whilst preserving the same form factor, which in essence speeds up the development process by far. Ok, after selecting microcontroller, I'll be clicking next. I'm not going to use any display for the demonstration of XC32 compiler, so I'll be clicking next once again. One note, before actually clicking on next button, I will make sure my board is connected to my laptop. And my board is powered on. Ok, now that I have successfully connected the board with my laptop, I will click next. I'm being presented with the programmer menu. Programmer device had been automatically deselected because I connected my board in a previous step. And finally, after clicking finish, I'm being presented with setup which has XC32 compiler as a preferred toolchain option. Two projects. We have a wallet setup, so let's create two projects. And another note, while dealing with microchips XC compilers, you need something which is called configuration bits, aka config bits or boards. Those are not necessary here in Nectar. Some of those are already configured by Nectar in the microcontrollers settings. If you want to modify some of them, go back to the project setup. Ok, let's move on. I chose working bare metal not that while ago, so I will demo simple LED blinking example. I will make use of something which is probably the most recognizable thing in XC compilers, the bits postfix, which is basically addressing individual bits within a byte or a word. This allows for clearer and more readable code when working with individual pins and their states. It's a common convention in micro microchips pick microcontroller development environment. This entry level example is building and I will flash it with the help of the onboard programmer which is called CodeGrip by the way. Ok, cool, I'm fine with that. Now something more complex, let's combine microchips XC compiler with microease ecosystem. And by microease ecosystem I mean microease development board, CodeGrip programmer, clipboards as the main part of the project and micro SDK set of libraries with which those clickboards are going to perform their thing. Here is the result of mixing microchips XC compiler with microease ecosystem. Straightforward, right? And here is a brief overview how I did it. I opened up an embedded wiki platform and I learned a little bit more about each mini clickboard, basically each prototype, just to get me started. 
Then I went back to Necto and I modified this setup to utilize Micro SDK instead of the bare metal logic. That was the first thing. The second thing was creating the actual project. The third thing was importing actual code examples of those clickboards by installing each one of them and then importing them into newly created project by utilizing library manager feature. I combined those examples and the result was the result you already saw. Tedious job of setting up dev environment, I think it's not an option when you are using an actor. I showed you steps and it didn't look too complex, right? Using XC, GCC, Clang and Micro C compilers for your project inside one environment, one IDE is possible. What's most important thing is it saves you time a lot. I mean by a lot. Okay, with this I call out the day. Okay guys, thank you for watching this episode. I'll be seeing you on the next one.